to drink coffee and talk about puffins. And I'm not gonna lie, I totally picked puffins because of Star Wars. Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Jeanette Andromeda and today I am doing something a little bit different because I am working with a whole bunch of YouTubers to create art that will help with animal conservation efforts. So today you're going to learn about my animal, which is the puffin, as I create some artwork and you get to listen to more about the Animal Artists Collective. So let's just jump right in. Okay, my friends. So uh, first off, just breaking the fourth wall a little bit. If my throat sounds rather scratchy, it is because when I recorded the voiceover, I had a little bit of a cold going on and it wasn't recorded at the exact same time as the rest of the video. In fact, this video took me about four days to record because it had to be crammed in between all sorts of things. But anyway, let me tell you about the Animal Artist Collective. The Animal Artist Collective is a group of nine artists here on YouTube, plus guest artists. Raise hand, that's me, I'm a guest artist this month, woo woo! Uh, but they founded this group to provide a platform for emerging artists, to promote positive messages for animal welfare and conservation, and to connect artists with their communities, like we're doing right now. Thank you guys, thank you for watching. And the most exciting part, to me at least, is that the original artwork produced in the making of all of these videos is going to be available for sale where at least 50% of the proceeds will go to a charity that helps support animal conservation. So if you decide you love these puffins that I am creating and you want to support the real life puffins who inspired it, um, you can buy the original painting on artpal.com slash horrormade and it's horror made because I haven't said it at Jeanette Andromeda one yet, uh, but I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Until then, this is the link you can find that at. So now that we've talked about the collective, let's talk about puffins in general because they are wonderful. And then I'll tell you about the charity that I'm going to donate to. Yes! So puffins, uh, I think the part that I want to start with is why I picked puffins, because the theme for this month is the poles and arctic animals. So initially I was like, oh, I should pick something like really big and cool and, and, and badass, like, like a caribou. Um, but then I was thinking about it a little bit more and I realized, oh no, Star Wars The Last Jedi is absolutely going to decide <laughs> what I'm going to draw today. Um, which is, in Star Wars The Last Jedi, there is an island that Luke Skywalker is being solemn and antisocial on. And there are these weird little animals just infesting the island. Just They called them porgs. They're just running around screaming and it's weird. And why the porgs became part of the universe wasn't because the creators of the movie wanted these little animals to animate all over the place, but because they had to cover up all the puffins that naturally nested on the island that they were filming on. So Skellig Michael is the island, it's in Ireland, and that's where they were filming, and they happened to be there during the puffins nesting season, which is really the only hospitable time of year that that island exists. So they had to share the space with the, with the puffins. And <laughs> when I learned that little fact about where the porgs came from, I, I just kind of fell in love with porgs because puffins themselves are freaking adorable. Um, a fun fact, they are often called sea parrots because of their giant beaky beaks, uh, very much like actual parrots, and they're often called clowns of the sea because of their bright colors and their adorable, super sad, cute, teardrop-looking eyes, which, ugh, oh, look at a puffin's face. Just look at that face. It's so adorable. <laughs> So another fun fact about puffins is that they are birds that fly around and they spend most of their lives at sea. So when they're not swimming and hunting fish, they're just floating around on the top of the ocean. And in fact, their range for where they live goes all the way from the coast of Canada and the US all the way over to the western coast of Europe. Which is crazy. If you think about it, a plane trip that takes like, what, 17 hours to get across? That's just their home. Like, they just, they float around there and fly around and that's what they do. But puffins, I think, are super cool. And I know 
that they need our help. So like I said, they are fishing fowls and they get all of their food from the ocean. They go hunting for fish and herring and hake and sand eels are their most important ingredient in a balanced puffin diet because that's the tiny little fish that they hunt that fits in the tiny little beaks of their tiny little chicks. And that's been a problem because they haven't been able to find enough of that type of food in their natural habitats because of overfishing and global warming and just a lot of pollutants in the ocean. So how can we help? We can help. And that's the beautiful thing. So that's why I chose Project Puffin as the charity that I want to donate to. Project Puffin was founded in 1973 based around the efforts of Dr. Stephen W. Kress, aka the Puffin Man, and why he started conservation efforts in Maine, USA, was because he'd learned that at one point in time, puffins naturally lived in the islands on the coast of Maine, and when he got there, there weren't any. What he learned was that in the 1800s, hunters had just decimated the colony of puffins that called Maine home, and he wanted to fix that. He wanted to bring puffins back. So the Audubon Society created Project Puffins so that he could help bring puffins back to specifically Eastern Egg Rock Island. And guess what, guys? They did it. Over a thousand nesting pairs of puffins now live in the main area of the United States, which is just incredible. I didn't realize that I could actually go meet a puffin and I definitely need that to be something I do very soon. You can actually adopt a puffin through the Puffin Project and that's part of their charity that they do and I definitely recommend you go check them out and check out their adopt a puffin program. That's the word I'm looking for because every little bit counts and every little bit helps. So if you decide you fell in love with the puffins in this painting, then uh, go to artpal.com slash horror made and you can buy the original there. And then 60% of whatever you spend on that artwork will directly go to support Project Puffin. And just so you guys know, the other 40% is shipping costs and paying the taxes on receiving that money in the first place. <laughs> Because where I live, anytime you make money as a freelancer or an artist, 30% of that goes directly to the federal government and state taxes. So there you go. <laughs> so this was my contribution to the Animal Artist Collective project, which I am a guest artist of this month and every other month everybody else does artwork like this. They have guest artists rotating in and out and you can do unofficial participation so you're not like actually on the roster but you're making it and making videos and whatever so just make it. Donate some art. Make some donations. Make some awareness happen in your little spectrum of the world. We can make a difference. We really really can. Question of the week is now coming back. <laughs> Now that I've gotten myself a little bit more leveled out, um, although I still don't know how I'm going to do question of the week with the vlogs that are coming up. We'll see. This might end up being like a live streamy thing that I do once a month. But for this moment in time, I would like to know what is one of your favorite Arctic animals? There are many, many, many of them and I recommend, if you don't know any off the top of your head, to go check out the rest of the Animal Artist Collective to see some of their suggestions as to animals from the Arctic. And uh, yeah, again, I, I know I say it a lot, but thank you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye! Awesome, sawsome. But <laughs> oh. Hibbity, hibbity, hibbity. I did it. I did it. It was it was good. And I'm going to stop recording. And if this is the thing I put at the end of the video, you're wonderful. And the screen is black, but that's because you should click on another video. Like that one. Ooh, what's that? That looks really exciting. Click on it. Also subscribe. Bye.